This video is all about incredible artifact finds, and we're leaving no stone unturned in our search for amazing artifacts. We've looked all over the world, and we've come up with a remarkable list of artifacts big and small, some just a few hundred years old, but others going back thousands of years. They're all incredible, and they're all coming to you right now. Marine archaeologists may have made the find of a lifetime off the coast of Cape Cod, Massachusetts, USA at the start of 2021. They've identified six skeletons preserved within concretions on the seabed close to the wreck of the legendary pirate ship Wida, and they believe that one of the skeletons is likely to be the remains of the famous pirate captain Black Sam Bellamy. There were 146 men aboard the Wida when it was lost during a storm in 1717, of whom only two survived. 101 were never found, and Black Sam Bellamy is among that number. A pistol identified as belonging to Bellamy was found within the concretions, giving the experts more reason to believe that they've finally got their man. Black Sam's career as a pirate didn't last long, but it burned brightly. He captured no fewer than 53 vessels, looting around $130 million worth of treasure in the process. The Wida was just two years old and considered cutting edge when Bellamy captured it, so the pirate captain decided to fit it with 10 more cannons and make it his new flagship. Unfortunately for him, the weight of those cannons might have been partially responsible for its eventual sinking. So little is known about the Critonius crown that most of what we think about it is down to guesswork. Let's start with the facts that we know to be correct beyond question. The first is that the crown was discovered in 1814 in a town in Armento, Italy. The second is that the tomb belonged to a man named Critonius, hence the name of the artifact. We don't know who Critonius was, but we can assume, based on the quality of his headgear, that he was a rich and important man, perhaps even a king. Scientists believe that the crown was made around 2,400 years ago. The base is made from a twig of oaks, around which are intertwined patterned representations of myrtle, roses, ivy, and narcissus. The very top of the crown features a depiction of an angel, or perhaps a goddess with wings, beneath which is an inscription in ancient Greek. Unfortunately, the inscription translates into English as, Critonius dedicated this crown, so it doesn't get us any closer to knowing who he was. It's a beautiful artifact, no matter how little we understand about it, and it's rightfully on display in a museum in Munich, Germany. In June 2018, Experts from the Archaeological Survey of India found three ancient chariots in western Uttar Pradesh. The chariots would be exciting no matter what they were made of or how old they were, but archaeologists and historians got very excited about these chariots because they are pre-Iron Age. If it could be proven that horses or bulls pulled these 4,000-year-old chariots, it's a discovery that would challenge the controversial Aryan invasion theory of ancient Indian history. That theory contends that there were no horses in India until they were brought in by the Aryan invasion around 3,250 years ago. It's said that the advantages that horse-drawn chariots gave the Aryans over the local Dravidians were the decisive factor in the war. If these chariots were horse-drawn, it would mean horses were already in India when the Aryans arrived, and the Aryan invasion theory goes out of the window. Copper chest shields, daggers, and swords were retrieved from the ground at the same time the chariots were discovered. These two seem to confirm the existence of a warrior class living in the Gangetic Plain and dispel the idea that the Aryans invaded India from Central Asia with ease. Here's another chariot story. Given that the archaeological site of Pompeii in Italy is world famous and has been known about for more than two centuries, it's astonishing that we're still making new discoveries there. We suppose that goes to show how thick the layers of volcanic ash and rock are, and how slow and laborious the process of sifting through it is. It's worth it, though, because every now and then, someone will find something like this four-wheeled processional chariot. It was found during the excavation of a villa known as Civita Giuliana, 
and is almost completely intact. In fact, it's in such astonishingly good condition that its original floral decorations can still be seen, as can its tin and bronze decals. The large size of the chariot suggests that it may have had a special ceremonial use, rather than being the type that people used for everyday public transport. It's even possible that it might be a politum, a carriage reserved exclusively for priestesses and high-ranking ladies. If so, it was probably used for marriages in exactly the same way that some modern couples still hire a carriage for their wedding day today. What might be the world's oldest toy was discovered in the ruins of the ancient city of Kultepe Kanis Karum in Turkey in 2014. The toy is a ceramic rattle, and the archaeologists responsible for the discovery believe it to be around 4,000 years old. Amazingly, the rattle was still in one piece when it was found, and still functions as a rattle because all of the small pebbles that make the rattling noise when the object is shaken are still inside it. Finds like this are important because our studies of ancient ancestors mostly focus on adults. We have very little idea what life was like for a child 4,000 years ago, but we now at least know that their parents were interested in giving them toys to pass the time with. It's another small reminder that the people who lived on Earth thousands of years before we were born weren't so radically different from us. As for whether or not this rattle is the world's oldest toy, to settle the matter, we'd have to develop more advanced technology so we can tell the difference in age between this artifact and a 4,000-year-old stone doll head that was found in Italy in 2004. Sticking with the theme of toys, a few wooden toy swords were found at the famous ancient Roman site of Vindolanda in England in 2017. The site is that of a former Roman barracks right on the edge of Hadrian's Wall. Hundreds of artifacts have been unearthed at Vindolanda over the years, but the September 2017 dig unearthed a pair of real Roman swords, plus a smaller pair of wooden toy swords similar to the type that you'd be able to buy from one of the Roman-themed gift shops near Vindolanda today. All of the artifacts date back to the time when Vindolanda was at the peak of its use around 2,000 years ago. One of the two real swords is thought to have been thrown away deliberately because its tip had been bent. The second sword, which was missing its handle and scabbard, was found in one of the former living rooms of the ancient Roman barracks. The families of the soldiers stationed at Vindolanda stayed with them at the site, so it's highly likely that the toy swords were made for entertaining their children. Now we're going to take a look at another discovery from ancient Roman Britain. It's long, thin, and pointy and made of metal, but it isn't a sword. It is, in fact, an ancient Roman penis pendant, which should perhaps more accurately be referred to as a phallic amulet. It was discovered in Higham, Kent in December 2020. Historians in England have seen penis pendants before, but this one is unusual because it's made of silver rather than the usual bronze. Wendy Thompson made the discovery while scouring a field with her metal detector, but took it to expert Roger Hatch for analysis. He was surprised to find that the amulet is anatomically correct in every way apart from one. For reasons that Roger can't immediately understand, the phallus lacks testicles. The Greco-Roman obsession with drawing or otherwise creating effigies of penises comes from a belief that the penis itself had regenerative powers enabling both fertility and domination. That's why so many Roman warriors went into battle wearing amulets like this one. They literally believed the amulets made them stronger. When they weren't being used by soldiers, penis pendants would often be given to children to help them ward off childhood illnesses. The Dead Sea Scrolls are among the most famous ancient documents in the world, with an age of roughly 2,000 years. One of them, though, is not like the others. The temple scroll is covered in a mysterious chemical coating that was applied before the text was written. A study performed in 2019 identified a mixture of calcium, sodium, and sulfur on the scroll applied directly to the animal skin. Aside from strengthening the skin, it also makes the scroll brighter and easier to read. The chemical mixture does not occur naturally in the Dead Sea, 
so it strongly implies that either the scroll was written elsewhere, or at least that the material came from elsewhere. Given there was no shortage of animal skins in the region, there's no obvious reason for this to happen. The other Dead Sea Scrolls were written on animal skins that were cleaned up, dried out, and then rubbed with sea salt to prepare them. A different process was followed with the Temple Scroll, one that isn't repeated with any other scroll from either the region or the era. The tale of the Tower of Babel is one of the most enigmatic in the whole Bible. Historians and scholars can't even agree on whether it was ever real, let alone what its significance might have been. In 2021, those who believe it physically existed got a big boost to their argument when an ancient tablet was discovered. It's alleged that this tablet is inscribed with the first ever image of the Tower of Babel. Even now, though, there's fierce debate about the provenance of the tablet because it's recently emerged from a private collection. Where it's been for the past several centuries is far from clear. The tablet appears to be around 2,600 years old, and its most recent owner claims that it was found at an ancient Babylonian site more than a century ago. The tale of its discovery can't be verified, but the age of the artifact can, as can the inscription which couldn't be more clear. When translated into English, it says, the Temple Tower of the City of Babylon. Next to it is a depiction of the ancient Mesopotamian ruler King Nebuchadnezzar II. If taken at face value, this is indisputable confirmation that the tower was very much real. Our next discovery takes us back to England, where an ancient Roman villa complex complete with a beautiful mosaic was found in a farmer's field in Rutland in November 2021. It's especially notable because the mosaic depicts scenes from Homer's Iliad. Designs like this before have been found in mainland Europe, but never before in the United Kingdom. The mosaic was discovered quite by accident by a farmer's son who was walking through a wheat field on his father's land and came across a few fragments of old pottery. When he bent down to pick it up, he noticed a pattern on the ground, and professional archaeologists were quickly summoned to the scene. The work likely dates from Britain's late Roman period, perhaps the late 4th or early 5th century. The mosaic was likely the floor of what would have been a large dining or reception room in the villa. Subsequent investigations have also revealed the presence of large outbuildings around the footprint of the villa, so there might be more to come from this site early in 2022. The farmer has pledged not to use the field for any farming activities until the work is complete. A rare copy of what's thought to be the first world map to refer to America by name was discovered in 2017. The unexpected emergence of the map got people thinking about how the Renaissance-era cartographer Martin Waldseemuller created this famous world map in 1507. It's a shockingly accurate representation of the world and its continents, given the limited information that was available at the time. Waldse Müller's map even helped to popularize the term America. In fact, it was Waldse Müller who came up with the name. Had the map never been made, we'd almost certainly know America by a different name. The 1507 map was based on historical sources, including the second century works of Claudius Ptolemy, but Ptolemy's work alone wouldn't be enough for the cartographer to expand upon it to this degree. It's possible that he used several other maps as references and spoke to seasoned travelers and sailors to assist him. He might also have cross-referenced that information with a nautical chart created by Nicola de Caverio of Genoa in 1503, from where he appears to have taken the shape of Greenland. Most historians agree that Waldse Müller's map was a mosaic work, but it was also a leap forward, and how he achieved that leap is a mystery. We're taking one more trip to England before we finish our tour. In September 2020, archaeologists working through a proposed housing development site in Northgate, Chester, came across what's thought to be an exceptionally rare ancient Roman gaming piece, the same team also found plenty of other ancient Roman artifacts, including brooches, spearheads, and combs, 
but none provoked quite so much interest as the gaming piece, which is made from an as yet unidentified animal bone. The bone piece is a little over an inch long, shaped like a lozenge, and has been polished almost to a shine. It's easily identifiable as Roman because of the ring and dot motif that's still just about visible on its surface. Experts think that the piece was used in the Roman game of mercenaries, also known as Ludus Lactrunculorum. It was a military strategy game for two people, played on a board, and might have been the basis for the modern game of draughts. We say might have been because despite finding multiple pieces and a few boards, nobody's ever found a complete Ludus Latrincinlorum set, nor any written explanation of the rules of the game. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.